Okay, things are kind of moving right along. Uh, in the interest of time and uh, sanity, mostly your sanity, um, I've sort of done a little bit of work behind the scenes here. Uh, I promise you, you've not missed anything, and I'll tell you exactly what I've done and, and, and how I did it as we go along here. Um, but essentially, uh, the, uh, all we're going to do right now in this section is just paint this top deck and let it dry. The bits and bobs that are in this tray are uh, two guns, uh, little guns, uh, the red, um, four of these red domes for the top and they're all done. Um, you watch me paint the wooden deck, that's ready to go. I do have the ladder that goes inside the conning tower and these are uh, four uh, door flaps for the torpedo tubes and they've been painted the same color, the dark gray of the hull. I've also gone ahead and um, I've painted all the flaps and you can see uh, they've been they've been painted in the uh, the dark gray, and then there is a light gray trim around them. And I've done four of those, um, but I'm I've left the the top uh, the, the top um, uh, dive planes. I've left them plain. Uh, this is the the bottom rudder. I've left that in the dark hall, uh, the dark gray, and these are two of the uh, longer lower dive planes and I've left them in the dark gray as well. Uh, the conning tower uh, is now basically complete. It has its light gray and its top. Uh, curiously, with sort of a splash of light gray, uh, which um, rests across the uh, watertight hatch that leads you down into the boat. And um, curiously, what I've done is uh, I've painted it in the gray, here it is, and um, I'll just sort of rest it in here. I'm I'm struggling with whether or not I'm going to leave this hatch open or closed. I don't know. Um, if I leave it up and open in this position, we'll be able to see down into. Or you'll see that there's stuff going on. Uh, however, if I have it in the closed position, um, I just think it's probably a lot more dramatic, which would mean that I would uh, forfeit putting in this ladder. And I have to say, I'm, I'm sort of edging closer and closer to doing that, um, just because, because I just think it'll be a little more dramatic. So I, I, I do have to, I have to think about that. Um, I have also created the flag. It is sort of it, it hasn't been furled yet and I so I have to I have to furl it, which I'll do, I mean crumple it up just a little bit and then put its rigging on, but it is it is ready to go. And uh so that's where we are. I have taped this up and I'm doing this in sections. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to do it this way and then let this dry, give it a, a, a varnish, uh, a matte varnish, let that harden up, um, and, and then uh, go about my business. Um, I'm going to give this some light coats. I'm running out of the XF-77. I have ordered some more, uh, but it has not arrived yet. So um, I'm going to have to uh, hope and pray that I can actually get this done. I think I can uh, because uh, I'm using uh, lacquer thinner to thin this down and that does get my paint to go quite a bit further. So we'll see how we do here. I'm doing about about uh, half and half. So uh, that's primarily because I already have quite a healthy coat of paint on this already. I took the trouble to do it. So really I'm cleaning up uh, a lot of the spray, uh, the overspray. But the other thing too is, is that 
when this comes to weathering, um, it's going to want to to have a mottled effect anyway. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start to just. And all I really want to do is I just really want to think about eliminating the overspray. I don't want to go crazy on this. Um, the other thing I haven't done is I haven't mixed it with, um, as you know from last time, I was using a few drops of the black. And that's deliberate because now what I want to do is add a level of shading to it. And so what that's going to do is to the eye, it's going to give it this kind of mottled effect and that's what we're going for. And then um, as, I'm, as I'm doing this, I'll talk a little bit about what I've been doing in terms of research for the weathering aspect of it because it's been kind of fun. And as you go along the deck, if you see any light spots, just hit them again. But um, we're doing pretty good. Now, curiously, um, I've got some kind of a paint reaction happening here, and I'm not sure what it is. Let me show it to you. I think it's interesting. It's worth taking a look at. Here we go. So if you notice right there, I've gotten a bit of a reaction. Other than that, she looks pretty good. It's got a nice sort of mottled effect to it. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now, it, will, it may well be that my air gun, my air brush, I should say, is, is doing it, but I don't think so. Um, but that's okay. We'll weather that up. And there she is. So that uh, gets the, t the top deck done. I'm going to let this dry and I may give it one more coat, but you don't need to see me doing that. You got the idea. The only other thing I wanted to point out to you is, is there are two watertight doors, which I have glued in the closed position. Um, in the open position, they're red anthracite black with a little white on them. But uh, again, I wanted the drama of this to be at sea for my weathering process. So I've gone ahead and, and uh, glued those shut. Uh, there were also a couple of bollards on uh, both ends of the ship I have glued in place and uh, this small element right here which I don't know the name of, forgive me, and I've glued that in place and that completes the deck. And uh, here you see it with the, the top on. So she's looking pretty snazzy. Um, I'm getting excited about getting close to the weathering process. So there we go for that step. Today I'm just putting some finishing touches on the conning tower. I'm going to tell you what I've done to the boat so far, where we are, and then uh, continue on with weathering uh, this specimen. It's been a really fun ride, and uh, this is a really great kit. Uh, lots of detail, not a lot of sprues, but certainly creates a really iconic piece of history. And as we uh, reviewed in the very first episode, some amazing stories uh, about this particular U-boat and its history. So uh, here we are. Uh, decals have been put on. There were not a lot of choices, but they're on. Uh, the boat has been painted in its classic gray and light gray. Uh, for those of you who have not been following along, and some of the some of this process in in this build series has been a little. A little slow, and I apologize for that. Um, but we're we're constantly working on our on our um, 
uh, on our production here so that we can uh, dial in just exactly what's important and what isn't. But anyway, uh, so this has had its, uh, as I said, its, its final coat of the XF77 in the Tamiya and the, um, uh, excuse me, the uh, 71050, which was the light gray. Now, I have added a couple of drops of flat black to it um, and I've done a, a little bit of mottling. What that means is, is I've not tried to get a perfect surface. I've deliberately created some light spots, light areas, and some dark areas. And this is simply because what I'm trying to do is create some interest for the eye. Um, and as I've said earlier, what I'm trying to do with this boat is sort of a, a slight, slightly heightened reality. So. Anyway, let, let's get on with it. I've got to um, uh, add the final pieces to the conning tower, and I'm going to do that right now. And for those of you who are following along, uh, this is page 13. Um, now, I will not put the propellers on. Well, yes, I will. I'll probably put them on. Let's put them on. Um, there, uh, I, I'm sort of hesitating here because as I put all this stuff on, now the likelihood of something getting knocked or broken is... Is, is really good. Um, but anyway, I digress. We are um, on this page, as I said. So let's plow ahead. Uh, and uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add what I, what I think, what I think is the whistle. Um, I'll put this on the front here. And um, let's see. Turn this around. Um, let's see where this goes. This is going to drop right, right here. It's going to drop right there. So I'm going to just do a quick test fit here, and then we will try to get this glued up. hand is completely in the way here. I apologize. You get it out of the way. And uh, let's back up here so we can see. I was trying to get in super close with and that isn't working. Of course you're trying to do this on camera and that's not working either. Uh, There we go. Okay, that is in. Uh, let me get a little closer here so you can see this. I'll bring this up to the camera. And we can see here. The light is not great. There we go. So you can see that part is in. Okay. Um, okay, the next thing we're going to put in is this rather large pipe and that's going to sit down here on the floor so that I'm camera and I am okay so I'm going to sit this down just double check the fit and that's good so like a other vent stack of some kind that is in there we go uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the deck and well the way we'll do that that's gonna sit on this little get 
this going here. And we are. So that is in. So the deck is in. And then after the deck is in, you can put in what is going to be this turnbuckle. So I'm going to uh, let me actually install the the the. the turn crank here, some kind of a turn crank with a handle. Forgive me for not knowing all of the correct terminology, that is really embarrassing, but um, I'm much more of a fantasy guy, and so I'm, I know enough to know it's a boat, but I don't know enough to know, <laughs> know just exactly what these things are. But I, um, I should have read up on them, that's my bad. Okay. One of the issues you're going to have, and um, there's not really any way around it really when you're using this kind of glue is um, I'm going to have to use something else here. So let me, this happens quite a bit with painted surfaces. Uh, these Tamiya glues, they don't like them. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little drop of the medium CA here. Just add a little doll up here to the bottom and then uh, let me drop this on here Be sure it's straight ahead and then there just come along with a little bit of the just stab that off it all adds to the to the greasiness and the gooiness of it, so that's all fine. So that is in. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add the two uh, the two the two telescopes, and I'm starting from the front here. So this piece just drops in like such. And the next piece just drops in like this. Now, these are not going to need any kind of glue because they're not going anywhere, so that's good. And then, um, as we know, or we don't know, I've decided actually to install this closed. Um, and that's purely for, from an aesthetic and weathering point of view. There's no point in having it open. I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, going to put it in the dry dock diorama. So, I'm just going to sit it down like that, and she is closed, and that's going to get weathered. And then the final piece, of course, is this unit here, which goes, let's see here, it's going to go right here, so let me just add a dab here. And get this seated. Okay, voila. And uh, there we go. That is all sort of done. I'm going to come out just a little hair there. Okay, make sure I'm sort of square. Square to the playing surface, as they say. So, um, the final thing to go on here is this radio antenna, and that just drops in like this. Now, um, 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do about rigging yet, guys, because um, if you have this particular kit, you'll already know uh, just how flimsy these posts are. They are not designed uh, on any in any way, shape, or form to um, hold. And I'll just put this down here so you can see it. To, to hold any kind of, uh, of, of rigging material, the weight will just bend them. But there you go. That is... That is what she looks like with all of the accoutrement on. Now bear in mind, this has not been weathered yet. So, let me turn it around. there we go so what I'm not going to do just yet is because this has actually been weathered is I'm not going to install this piece what I am going to do is I'm going to now put it in place on the boat because everything now has to be I'll just make triple sure everything is where it needs to be before I um, commit to gluing this down. And there's a final one right here. And they are in. So the domes are in. And the only other thing now is to install the propellers. Here they are. They've had a coat of the bronze and a coat of the flat on them. And obviously they're going to, um, they're going to get uh, weathered like everything else. So here that, here's that. And I will install these now. Now I'm really at a point of no return in terms of anything that snaps now. I'm in a world of hurt. The last thing I have to do now is, and I will do this, is I'm going to attach these monikers, which are life, life preservers really, but you know, they look like upside down horseshoes. And I was always, I was always, you know, if you're a superstitious person, um, a horseshoe is not something uh, you put upside down because they said your luck would run out. Okay, it's pretty good. Show you that on fill cam. So that's what that looks like installed. It's pretty good. So everything is on now, everything is ready to go. So the next step now is weathering. Very exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, for for the next step, and uh, let's dive in and have some fun. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I'm very excited about this. So here we go. As I have uh, said uh, earlier is um, what, I, what, I, what I want to do is a slightly heightened reality. And what I mean by that is, is visually to the eye, I want this to look like a, a sort of a dramatic scene as opposed to something that might be canon or perfect. Now I'm gonna try and get it as detailed as possible, but I'm also gonna sort of think creatively, artistically about what I think will or won't be 
uh, happening. And the first thing I like to do when I look at a subject uh, like, like this is I like to go, okay, um, especially with something like this, how does it function? Uh, where do we start? So I know this has, um, obviously it sits in the ocean. It goes under the ocean. So it has um, ballast tanks, obviously, that are taking water in and pushing water out so it can rise and fall. And all of these different, various different holes um, where water can drain in and out are obviously places where rust will accumulate. Um, and, and salt water is highly corrosive, even though these boats are painted with, um, um, their, their steel is painted with, I'm sure, oil-based paints in, uh, in the day. Um, they chipped and cracked and, and did all sorts of things like that. So, um, so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna try and achieve here. Um, now, I, I've decided to do my chipping in, 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 in sort of uh, peeling and cracking here with brush strokes as opposed to spraying a chipping compound on here and, and, and tapping it off. Um, the reason for that is, is because I, I, I think sometimes um, it's, it's difficult to control the scale of that chipping. Um, anyway, that's just me. Um, so the first thing actually I, I, I really want to do is, is I want to install, uh, I want to install my uh, conning tower permanently now. And I'm going to do that because um, it's, it's time to actually own, own this and, uh, and, and make sure that everything is down so that when I do my overall weathering, everything is consistent. Uh, that's why everything is on the boat. Um, so I'm going to tack this down now with just a little bit of the, uh, of the thin. Um, it's not going to take much to hold it down, actually. Um, should be all it needs. So my first step here is going to be thinking about the streaking effect of, of salt water. That as it beads off the boat, it, it sort of leaves this corrosiveness. So to that end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, this, which is Mr. Weathering Color for realistic models. This is the multi-white. Uh, there it is. And um, what I'm going to do and now is I'm going to put this on. Uh, now, this, this, this can be thinned, obviously, with just a, a Q-tip and a, a little light uh, thinners. Um, now, uh, Mr. Hobby has its own thinner, and I have some. You do not have to use Mr. Hobby. You may use anything else. You can make your own washes up. You can use the Tamiya's. Tamiya also has this in the white. Um, I found it not easy to actually find this, this stuff at, at hobby shops. It's curious what is actually kept and what isn't. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. And um, I'm gonna think about how it would collect and trail down. And um, and I'm doing it sort of in a vein kind of way. So let it sort of accumulate here. And I'm trying to keep it as as thin as possible. Now you don't have to worry too much because we can take a lot of this off um, with uh, a Q-tip and really kind of work this in. So this is really kind of just the first step. 
of um, of getting this on here, and it uh, and it really is a trial and error because um, what you're trying to do is sort of keep it all kind of dramatic. Um, let it run down the boat. Here we go. And um, so there you go. And you can see what I'm what I, what what I'm trying to achieve here in terms of this veining. And it's really starting to uh, create a really kind of interesting effect. And I, I've only just started. So let me get this on fill cam for you. Here we go. It's really kind of fun. And it's, um, it's going to be quite dramatic. Now obviously we'll take that down quite a bit with some feathers and Q-tips, but we're just getting on, on the base coat. So I'm going to continue to do that uh, because I have got a lot to do, but I wanted to show you um, my step one. Okay. Uh, we'll be back uh, in a nanosecond. <laughs> so I have put a base coat on of my white, which sort of gives you that salt kind of, uh, kind of look. Now I want to add some grime and some mud. So I'm going to start with light dirt. Um, and what I'm using is the ultimate weathering washes, which are clay based. I'm going to give this a good shake and I'm going to apply this. Let me get my cloth here and uh, something to wipe it on. So I usually have this standing by. And we're going to give this a nice. A nice wash. Now the nice thing about the clay based is that uh, it gets in all the nooks and crannies and um, it really does a nice job of, uh, of settling down and because it's water based um, it, it, it it's easier to remove. I'm just going to pull the, the smoke stacks up so we get some a weathering effect in there. Um, now you got to get this all over and as you can see I'm trying to get it in all the nooks and crannies so that there's a little bit of it everywhere not just in, in one place. So I started in the middle of the boat and I am, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work all the way to the right and then I'll work all the way to the left and that should, should make sure that I have proper coverage. Um, and I'm not too super worried here at, at this point, but I am trying to pay attention to which way the water flows so that um, we get some aspects of this, this sort of weathering um, to feel like it's 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 being pulled by by water and gravity and, and, and everything else. And I'm gonna keep going here. And um, I'm going to uh, sort of carry on and make sure I get my coverage correctly. And then when we come back in a nanosecond, uh, we'll, we'll be taking this off with a Q-tip and sort of starting to really dial it in uh, as an effect. So we'll, we'll, we'll be back with that in a second. I'm using a combination of Q-tips and paper towels to wipe off this dirt. Now, some of it has dried already and, and, and some of it hasn't. Um, 
and um, what I'm looking for is this sort of combination of um, hard lines, hard dirt, and uh, just smears. And um, where I think it's too heavy, I'm just putting a, a little dab of water on it and taking, taking, taking it off. Um, where it is dried and I want to sort of cut through it, I'm just sort of dabbing my Q-tip in a little bit of water and I'm, I'm sort of dragging this along. And what I'm going to try and do here is uh, put fill cam up very quickly here. And so, um, just up close and personal, I'm taking the Q-tip that is sort of slightly damp and I'm I'm brushing it but I'm always brushing it sort of this this way um, because I'm trying to establish water lines here and um, and some dirt as well and you can see I can take as much of this off as I want to um, and it, it behaves quite well and, and, and the reason why it behaves so well is because it's just water-based clay so you're not really in any trouble uh, here of, 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 of having uh, any permanent damage to your paint job you can literally just wipe it all off um, so that's what I'm doing here and uh, this is this is quite quite an intense process um, and it's going to take quite a while so uh, what I'm going to do is keep going and uh, we'll take a look at this next step after uh, I've had a chance to, to really dive in. Because I, I have about, a, uh, believe it or not, about 45 minutes to an hour's worth of work here uh, to, to, to get this where I want it. And again, you know, nothing's written in stone because it's all water-based and that's what I like about it. Other than the Mr. Uh, weathering color which really sort of adds that salty kind of look to it and I can add more of that too as, uh, as I please um, but I'm not I'm not really uh, chasing a clock here as it were uh, with, with this kind of weathering process and that's kind of why I'm I'm I'm, I'm just into it uh, because I, I, I just like the fact that I can just keep playing with it until I get a, a, a texture that I like um, and um, a staining that I like. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to carry on with this uh, process and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at what I've got um, in a nanosecond and I'll be back, okay? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so we're really diving into the weathering here. Lots of different techniques going on. Panel line and accent washes. Our ultimate weathering, um, our ultimate weathering clay-based washes. Little brushes tapped into a little bit of our greys, vallejos, darks, rusts, chipping, just touching the surface because I didn't spray this with any kind of hairspray or anything like that because um, I think it just sort of goes too far. I get a little more uh, control over just little dabs. It was a great technique that I learned from some very talented Gundam, if you can produce, uh, believe this, uh, Gundam builders online, and um, touching the surface with a little bit of paint, and then following that up with perhaps a little bit of the uh, Tamiya X19 smoke. You can see I'm using that there. Um, lots of fun, and take it slowly, and just bit by bit by bit and you'll see some really fun techniques starting to happen and if you don't like something wipe it off wash it off uh, but anyway I wanted to show you something today that I thought was a was kind of cool what I'm doing is I'm putting on and again this will be softened but I wanted you to see the technique that I was using uh, 
so as we know, all of these bilge holes that I'm calling them, water is rushing in and out and in and out. And as it dries on the surface of a deck, and perhaps the metal warms it up, you get this salt, this crusting effect. And I wanted to duplicate it. Here's how I'm doing it. I've got the MIG oil brusher. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with these, but I, I have a bunch of them. I use them mostly with my uh, fantasy builds, um, but they are really terrific. This one happens to be uh, the, uh, the white, and uh, it reacts to uh, enamel thinners. Uh, you can also use just turpentine as well. And what I'm doing is, I'm using just, just a touch, and I'll just put a little on, just, not, not a lot, but just a touch, like that. And uh, then what I'm doing is, with a cotton swab, I'm just dabbing, dabbing it off. Now, I'm dabbing it off uh, towards towards the side of, of the boat, because obviously the water is going to come down the, the, this, uh, the, the deck here, and it's going to come towards the water. So I dab that out, like this, and then what I'm doing is I'm taking the brown panel liner from Tamiya, the brown, uh, make sure it's shaped, but it's got enamel in it, so it's going to react to the oil paint. And I'm touching it on, as you can see here, and it's reacting already, you can see. And I'm pushing it around. I'm being careful not to kill all of the white, but then I'm just dabbing that just a little bit. And you get this lovely effect. And there it is. There you go. And you get this wonderful salting effect. And I'm just really liking that. Um, when this, which is the final piece, uh, goes on the conning tower, and I'll put it on here for, for us so we can take a quick look at it like this really starts to uh, really starts to look quite dramatic lots of fun there's no rules to this when you're going this far with 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 the, the weathering but I just think it adds a certain drama to the boat and and I also think that it um, it adds character to it and it tells a bit of a story these things were banged up and um, they uh, they were put through their paces, and uh, that, that's how I'm going to uh, finally display it in, in that mode. Um, and I think I'm going to attempt to rig this with the super fine um, black rigging uh, wire here from Infini, Infini Models in the UK. Uh, this is the uh, 0.05 millimeter, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try and use that on the, on the rigging. Um, I don't know how successful I'm going to be because it's very flimsy. And um, I'm hoping perhaps uh, Pontos or, or somebody will come out with uh, a metal version of these um, so that they can be rigged properly. Here we are on the bench, all finished and looking amazing. I had a tremendous amount of fun building this kit and I know I went into a tremendous amount of detail and for those of you who followed along and watched everything, bless you, I really appreciate it. I won't be doing an awful lot of these because getting in the weeds on a build I know sometimes it can be a little monotonous so I apologize for those who weren't interested. But for those who were, thank you, and I really appreciate the, the comments. If you're just joining, welcome. Please like and subscribe. You can also follow me on 
Instagram at at Spruverse, and of course my website where I'll be posting a complete detailed blog with photos of the entire build, uh, and that's Spruverse.com. So uh, a little bit about this 172 scale kit from Dustverk. It did not have a lot of sprues, obviously, there were just four of them. Not complicated from that perspective. The struggle, I suppose, in the beginning, a little bit of uh, the hull um, did not come together a, a, as easily as I had hoped. Um, but for the most part, she was really a lot of fun to build. So for those of you who are interested in uh, really going to town on this kit, you really can. Uh, I just did some basic things to it. Now, with respect to the, the rigging, I wanted to talk about that just briefly because there is a company called Infony, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this here on Ccam for you to see. Uh, hopefully the light is such there. And what this is, is a 0 0.055 millimeter super fine aero black rigging. It is incredibly lightweight and very, very easy to use. All I did was simply wrap it around the piece that I wanted to, to, to rig. And I'll show you this on Phil Cam because I do think it's worth it. There we go. It's super fine. And what I did was, was I was able to simply, uh, with a pair of tweezers, wrap it around the piece just a little touch of super thin and a little touch of kicker and it went off like that and it was pretty easy and for somebody like myself who's a real novice at rigging this wasn't t too bad now um, the fact of the matter is is this particular piece uh, this mast uh, or radio tower uh, or radio post I should say is very very flimsy and so any kind of tension on it, and it's just going to bend and flop. But this super fine aero rigging wire um, works a treat, and I think you'll do okay with it. Um, now, I went to town on uh, a lot of this with the washes and uh, uh, just, just some of the details, and, and I had an awful lot of fun with it. Um, let me show you with Phil Cam up close here. Uh, I don't ever like doing this because, you know, the, these are not really meant to be um, seen, uh, you know, with your nose down at it. But I'm happy to show just a little bit of the detail on here, um, which from three feet away looks, looks really cool. Um, and I'll go, go this way just a little bit. And there's a little bit of the, the mass there. Um, a lot of fun and it'll be a great piece to put on my collection now I've put this on its plastic base temporarily I'm gonna get the dust dry dock uh, dust dock piece from Ushi I don't think it's available here in the States yet now I know Andy's hobby headquarters mentioned uh, they had a sort of an advanced copy of it and they built it um, it's basically laser cut wood and the uh, the actual um, the the actual surface of of the wood it, it lo looks to be like just just paper that you 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 stick on. I don't know about it, um, but I do like the idea of a dry dock, and it does look like the perfect diorama to sit this in. So at some point this year, I will pick that up, and um, I will replace it. But for now. This is a good holding, uh, a holding piece for this. Um, there were no other issues really, but uh, looking at it, um, I, I, I'm really happy with it. I mean, I, th I think it's a, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the only other thing I did do was on the flag, uh, you'll notice that the flag itself, um, here and I'll, I'll, I'll get that on field cam for you. There she is. And uh, she appears to be uh, flapping in the wind. I've given her just a little bit of, of um, uh, weathering. Um, now, originally, I went to Edouard and I found some U9 flags, but obviously, uh, they were from World War II. They were wrong, and uh, but but the, they were they were made of a, a very thin metal. Now, you could take these decals 
and put it on a very thin piece of, of foil and probably get the same result. But I will tell you guys, these decals are not the greatest. You have to be really careful with them. So keep them moist, uh, get them on the surface as quickly as possible, and then get something, uh, uh, some kind of a decal bonding agent over it immediately. That calms it down. Uh, but you can't move them around a lot. These, these things will tear on you in a New York second. So be very, very careful with these decals. So anyway, here's a couple of just quick uh, pre uh, videos that I shot earlier of, of the boat. Just uh, a little montage. I uh, hope you enjoy it. So there it is, the Untersee Boat U9 from World War I, Das Werks 172 scale model. And uh, she is uh, now going to find a happy home in my private collection. Thanks for uh, being a part of this build. Uh, if you've just joined us, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to be going back to some fantasy next uh, on the next episode. <laughs> so we're going to be back to some uh, something um, something a little more in my, in my world. Uh, but I have to say, this will this definitely inspired me to do more in the genre, and I'm going to look for a few more things to do. Uh, and I just got some parts in for my Spitfire. So if you were following that build, she's going to be back on the bench. Until we meet again, have fun, be safe, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.